you promise that you will not ask me another question about the case. I will never ask you again. We won't have to talk about it anymore. Just did you do it? <laughs> no, I didn't. Nope. Did not do it. O.J. Simpson, the ex-NFL player famously acquitted of charges in a high-profile trial involving the murder of his ex-wife and her friend, has passed away from cancer as confirmed by his family. At the age of 76, Simpson is survived by his children and grandchildren, who were with him during his final moments. In a statement shared on X, the family asked for privacy and compassion during this time. If you remember watching the slow-mo Bronco chase in the criminal trial on TV a couple of decades ago, the Brentwood estate that once belonged to OJ is still shrouded in mystery. And even though the home was torn down in 1998, it was still making news in recent years, such as when a knife was found buried on what was once OJ's property. O.J. Simpson, the former NFL athlete famously acquitted of charges in a highly publicized trial involving the murder of his ex-wife and her friend, has passed away at the age of 76 due to cancer, which was confirmed by his family. Since sensational trial for the murder of his ex-wife Nicole and her friend Ron Goldman. In February, there were reports circulating about Simpson's health, suggesting he had prostate cancer and was receiving hospice care while undergoing chemotherapy. To say it's not unusual at all, there's 200,000 men a year with prostate cancer diagnosed. However, Simpson refuted claims of being in hospice in a video posted on X, although he didn't directly address whether he'd been diagnosed with cancer. Hospice? Hospice? You talking about hospice? <laughs> no, I, I'm not in any hospice. I don't know who put that out there, but... Orenthal James Simpson, widely known as the Juice during his 11-season career in the National Football League, faced a significant tarnishing of his sports legacy in the 1990s, following the tragic deaths of his ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ronald Goldman. The events unfolded on June 13, 1994, when Goldman was returning sunglasses left at a restaurant by Brown Simpson's mother. Tragically, both individuals were brutally stabbed and slashed multiple times, with their bodies discovered the following day. When lost Los Angeles police officers visited Simpson's home to discuss the slayings, he didn't respond to their attempts to make contact. However, authorities observed a trail of blood leading to Simpson's car, as well as blood traces in the vehicle itself. Shortly after, authorities formally charged Simpson with the murders. In a dramatic turn of events, he attempted to evade arrest, sparking a now infamous hours-long police chase along the highways of Southern California in his white Ford Bronco. Simpson's case proceeded to trial in 1995, capturing the attention of millions of viewers nationwide as it unfolded on live TV. Dubbed the trial of the century, the proceedings stretched on for months, captivating the public and evolving into a spectacle. Sentiments surrounding the trial have remained divisive over the years, while some have criticized the LAPD, alleging racism in the handling of the case. Others believe Simpson's access to top-tier legal representation played a significant role in his acquittal, stirring ongoing debate and controversy. Decades after the Simpson murder trial, its events were revisited in FX's The People vs. O.J. Simpson, a part of the network's acclaimed American crime story series. The release of the Academy Award-winning documentary O.J. Made in America in the same year further detailed Simpson's journey. Simpson's roots trace back to San Francisco, where he was raised in public housing before attending a local community college and later transferring to the University of Southern California. His athletic skills earned him national recognition, including winning the Heisman Trophy in 1968 and being drafted as the number one overall pick by the Buffalo Bills in 1969. During his football career, Simpson achieved remarkable milestones, notably becoming the first player in the NFL to rush for 2,000 or more yards in a single season, solidifying his status as one of the era's premier running backs. From his first marriage to Marguerite Whitley, Simpson had three children, tragically losing one in a drowning accident during infancy. Additionally, he shared two children with Nicole Brown Simpson. Following Nicole's tragic murder and his subsequent acquittal, Simpson gained custody of their children and relocated to Miami with them. This decision sparked a contentious legal battle with his former in-laws, drawing more media attention. 
After the tragic deaths of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman, OJ's former home in Brentwood, California, which he shared with Nicole, became a morbid attraction for tourists seeking a glimpse into the infamous trial of the century. Following Simpson's acquittal, the house still drew unwanted attention to the neighborhood. According to reports, the property remained vacant for two years after the murders. In 1997, new owners undertook massive landscaping changes to destroy the site's connection to the crime, even changing the address in an attempt to dissociate it from the murder. This home spread 6,000 square feet of space with luxury amenities throughout. OJ's backyard included a gorgeous swimming pool and tennis court. He mentioned in his house tour he did in the early 90s that his bedroom's balcony overlooked this beautiful space. In that same tour, he showed his master bedroom, which once featured a huge fireplace and a king bed. OJ's one-time living room had cream-colored couches, big pillars, and several plants, while a family room nearby spent the entire length of the house. In 1998, billionaire investor Investor Ron Burkle, known for his associations with high-profile figures like Bill Clinton and Leonardo DiCaprio, took the lead in demolishing the former Simpson house. Partnered with financer Kenneth Abdallah, who acquired the Brentwood property for nearly $4 million in 1997, Burkle oversaw the destruction of the 6,000-square-foot house to make way for a new construction. Despite the potential value of salvaging mementos from the infamous mansion, the new owner opted for a clean slate, deeming everything unusable. Consequently, the remnants of the house were discarded. Consequently, the remnants of the house were discarded, leaving nothing but scraps destined for the landfill. The demolition process attracted considerable attention, much like the frenzy surrounding the murders in the early 90s. In 2016, a knife purportedly linked to the murders briefly captured headlines, but was later dismissed by the LAPD. Despite the construction of a new house, the site remained a magnet for curiosity seekers needing ongoing security measures for years to come. In 2023, the Miami home where OJ lived with his two youngest children after the infamous trial was quietly demolished. Simpson acquired that Florida property in 2000, which was a spacious four-bedroom, four-bathroom residence spanning over 4,100 square feet. It cost him $575,000 at the time, equivalent to almost $1 million today. The home stood on a gated 1.65-acre piece of land, which included a guest house, a swimming pool, and a basketball court. Following OJ's later 2008 conviction in an armed robbery case related to sports memorabilia dealers in Vegas, the property faced foreclosure four years later while Simpson was serving a sentence in prison. In 2012, JP Morgan Chase Bank foreclosed on the house. In the summer of 2022, the property underwent demolition and was listed for sale at $2.6 million. Situated in Miami's Killian neighborhood, the land remained on the market for several months, eventually reducing its price to $1.9 million in an attempt to attract buyers. Surrounded by mature trees, the previous listing emphasized the potential for a custom-built estate, highlighting it as an excellent opportunity to acquire one of the largest remaining parcels of land in the emerging West Pinecrest area. Simpson lived in the residence with his son Justin and daughter Sydney during their teenage years, both of whom attended the nearby prestigious Gulliver schools. The last place O.J. Simpson was living before his passing was Las Vegas, Nevada. He bought the property, which was nearby the Strip, for $1.8 million when he was released from prison around 2017. His two-tier, Spanish-style mansion spanned 5,000 square feet and boasts five bedrooms and five-and-a-half bathrooms. Outside, it came with an outdoor pool nestled amongst palm trees and lush greenery, while there was a mini putting green too. While that wraps up our look at O.J. Simpson's one-time properties following his recent passing, we can remember the crazy history that some of these locations had. Simpson's life story has been the subject of numerous documentaries, reenactments, and analyses shedding light on his rise to fame and subsequent fall from grace. From his early days in San Francisco to his athletic achievements at the University of Southern California and the Buffalo Bills, Simpson's legacy in the world of sports remains significant. While his passing marks the end of a tumultuous chapter in American history, the controversies surrounding his life and legal battles ensure that his legacy will continue to be debated and scrutinized for years to come. Be sure to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss a video. We'll see you all next time on Famous Luxury. Bye for now.
Hey everyone, it's Kara, or Kara the Vampire Slayer as you might know me, and given my love for all things house and home, I recently wanted to get more hands on myself, and I started tackling DIY projects at my own house. Being a new homeowner, there are plenty of unexpected things to fix, and it's cool to learn what you're doing and hopefully be able to fix it yourself. There are also plenty of DIY projects suitable for beginners like me to do and ones that improve the look of your space drastically. Follow me and I'll teach you what I'm learning and motivate you to join me. You can DIY on a budget even if you're a total beginner. Follow me on Fix It With Kara and we can chat.